Cervical disc herniation. Cervical disc herniation occurs most frequently at C6, C7 level. It also can occur at C5, C6. The patient will complain of neck pain due to nerve root irritation with the pain radiating to the ipsilateral upper extremity. Patient may complain of numbness, parathesia, and weakness. Neck movements, coughing, and sneezing make the pain worse. When the nerve is compressed or irritated, each nerve involved will show this effect on a specific area of motor power, sensation, and reflexes. So if you have a C6, C7 disc herniation, it will affect C7 nerve root. The sensory in C7 will be the middle finger. And the motor will be elbow extension, the triceps, and wrist flexion and finger extension, assuming the shape of number 7, reflex. C7 is a triceps reflex. How about C5, C6 disc herniation? This will affect the C6 nerve root. It will affect the sensation at the index and the thumb. You can see in the diagram to the right the area that's involved in C6 nerve root irritation. The brachioradialis reflex is a C6 reflex. How about the motor? C6 is wrist extension, extensor carbi radialis longus and brevis. And C5, C6 is the biceps and the elbow flexion. How about C4, C5 disc herniation? This will affect the C5 nerve root. This will affect sensation around the shoulder area. C5 will affect the biceps reflex. As regard the motor, the C5 will affect the deltoid function. Please note that elbow flexion is C5 and C6. Spelling test is a physical examination provocative test. The spelling test is used frequently to assess the cervical nerve root impingement or irritation. The spelling test is specific for evaluation of the cervical nerve roots. Usually, the patient comes to the doctor with a complaint of neck pain. The pain is due to nerve root irritation with the pain radiating to the ipsilateral upper extremity. The doctor will try to see if the patient has a cervical disc herniation with irritation of the nerve root. Keep in mind, cervical spine problems and shoulder problems overlap. Doctor will examine the patient carefully, and each nerve that's involved will show its effect on the motor power, on the sensation, and on the reflexes. Each level will get the nerve at the lower number. For example, herniation at the level of C5, C6 will get the C6 nerve root and herniation at C6, C7 will get the C7 nerve root. There are some other tests for cervical spine radiculopathy which are called provocative tests. Spurling test, shoulder abduction test, and shoulder impingement test. If it is positive, it indicates that the problem is in the shoulder joint itself and not in the cervical spine. The Huffman test and the Lermy test, they test if the cervical spinal cord is involved or not. Welling test is one of them performed to assess cervical nerve root pain and impingement. Clinician will stand behind the patient and the patient can be sitting down or standing up. 
the examiner will do extension lateral flexion and some rotation of the neck towards the affected side. Downward compressive force to the top of the patient head is applied. Axial loading. It reproduces the symptoms by narrowing the neuroforamen. A positive test will reproduce the pain in the upper extremity when the axial load or the compressive force is applied. A positive test causes radiating pain down the patient's arm. Radiating pain will be attributed to the nerve root impingement or compression on the same side, ipsilateral side. Spelling test differentiate cervical radiculopathy from peripheral nerve entrapment. How about the shoulder abduction test? The shoulder abduction test is different. The patient's symptoms are relieved by shoulder abduction by placing the hand over the head. This test helps to differentiate between cervical spine pathology and other causes of shoulder pain. It is an important test for cervical radicular compressive disease. The relief of the symptoms occurs due to decreased tension on the nerve roots. If there is a relief of symptoms by shoulder abduction, then the cause of shoulder pain is not a shoulder pathology, but it is pain that is probably coming from the cervical nerve root pathology due to nerve irritation. Patient with cervical disc herniation, nerve root irritation, and radiculopathy could be treated conservatively up to three months with therapy and non-esteroidal anti-inflammatory medications. 75% of these patients will improve with non-operative treatment. When should we do surgery? If the patient has persistent pain for 6 to 12 weeks or if there is progressive neurological deficits. Cervical radiculopathy is an irritation of the cervical nerve roots. In cervical disc problems, be aware of false positive MRIs, especially if the patient is above the age of 40 years old. Nerve conduction studies are also not very useful. It has a high false negative rate. EMG and nerve studies may differentiate radiculopathy from peripheral nerve entrapment. Patient also may complain of occipital headache. Make sure you don't have a double crush syndrome. One in the neck from cervical disc herniation and an additional entrapment of a peripheral nerve. Make sure you differentiate cervical radiculopathy from myelopathy. Examine the patient for upper motor neuron signs or cervical myelopathy. Test the patient for gait disturbance. Test the patient for Hoffman sign. Test the patient for Papineski reflex. Test the patient for ankle clonus and for hyperreflexia in the upper and lower extremities. Treatment. Even if there is a bad cervical spine disc herniation on an MRI, treat the condition conservatively for about three months. 75% of the patient will improve with non-operative treatment. Cervical radiculopathy is usually treated non-operatively in contrast to cervical myelopathy. Do surgery when there is persistent severe pain for 6 to 12 weeks and if there is a progressive neurological deficit such as weakness. The procedure to treat the cervical radiculopathy is usually done anteriorly with direct removal of the herniated disc that causes the radiculopathy. When we place the anterior bone graft or bone graft substitute in the disc space, we open the neuroframen and that will indirectly relieve the nerve root irritation. Then after that, we add the anterior plate 
to secure the graft and to allow fusion of this cervical spine level. One year after undergoing anterior cervical disc decompression and fusion, about 10 to 15% will still have dysphagia. If a patient complains of acute neck pain and intermittent parathesia in the lower extremities and in the hands and clumsiness and feeling of heaviness in the lower extremity and gait disturbance, look for a central disc herniation at the cervical spine. So the treatment will be anterior cervical discectomy and fusion with a 5 to 10% of pseudoarthrosis or non-union for single level fusion and about 30% for multi-level fusions. Smoking is a risk factor for non-union. What is the differential diagnosis of cervical disc herniation? Number one, carpal tunnel syndrome. Number two, cervical myelopathy. Number three, break and neuritis. Number four, cubital tunnel syndrome. Number five, thoracic outlet syndrome. Number six, diabetic neuropathy. Number seven, brachial plexus injury. Number eight, shoulder pathology referred to the neck area. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.